Introducing Croatia. We are Dan and Lynn Goggin. We want to invite you to learn more about a ministry in Eastern Europe. Croatia is a part of the former Yugoslavia. Specifically, this ministry is that of the Zaprešić Church of Christ, located in Zaprešić, which is a suburb about 15 miles west of Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. This church is centrally located in a rapidly growing area and is community focused with current and planned programs to help those with special needs, orphanages, and the recreational and Christian education needs of children. After the fall of the Iron Curtain and the end of communist control of Eastern Europe, sadly in Yugoslavia the Bosnian Wars erupted among the various factions of ethnic and religious groups and lasted from 1991 to 1995. In Croatia, refugees fled their rural farms and homes and came to Zagreb, where various international and Christian groups, including Churches of Christ, sent boxes of food, clothing, and supplies. From this, bonds of friendship began between young Croatian churches and their U.S. counterparts. With independence, post-war Croatia has grown and hopes to join the European Union and NATO. As a nation, it has a traditional history of being Roman Catholic, although decades of religious suppression brought a lot of indifference, doubt, and basic lack of biblical knowledge. Now, many people are more interested in spirituality and open to enthusiastic and caring Christian teaching and discussion. So, our problem is to reach out to them well enough. Ivan Teshik's minister and his family. Ivan Teshik grew up in a large family in Bosnia. He came to America for further education. After more biblical study, Ivan became a Christian and completed undergraduate and graduate Bible degrees, the latter at Abilene Christian University. He then returned to Croatia and in the early 1980s, and along with others, began a Church of Christ, a Protestant Restoration Church in Zagreb. About that time, he also met and married Ruth Witcher, an American teacher, and they began raising a family of three sons, Peter, David, and Daniel. The Tesiches moved to Zaprešić to begin a congregation there in 1990. Yvonne currently receives oversight and supervision from the Longmont Church of Christ in Longmont, Colorado. Ruth has actively led the church's youth education program and now provides accredited religious instruction for public school children whose parents request it through the Zaprešić Church of Christ. Ivan's brother, Nikola, serves the church as assistant minister, and he is also in charge of local benevolence. Nikola's son, Ivica, is a college graduate who has done mission work elsewhere in Europe 
and he also performs various church staff duties. During our trip, he ably served as travel guide and translator for both Lynn and myself in Dubrovnik, as well as during the worship service. Greetings to you, brothers and sisters, uh, in uh, Fort Worth at the University Church of Christ. In the name uh, from our congregation here in Zaprešić, Croatia, that you are uh, partnering with us in this mission. We are very grateful to uh, Goggins that they came our way and because of them actually you are able as well to see uh, uh, the next as well uh, parts of activities that will take place on this Sunday on the 20th of August uh, 2006 as they were visiting this week with us. Uh, they've decided to uh, record this uh, and bless us with this camera for later on that we can uh, be in touch through this digital system uh, in the future either with you as our partners or anybody else. Uh, the Lord is blessing us in so many ways and they will share personally with you and maybe with some of you as well in your living rooms through this uh, avenue. God bless you and thank you for all. Jesus, Jesus, be, be there to the uh, we want to thank your ministers and your young members, uh, Tony Tokic uh, and Yvonne, Ruth, their sons, and their church family realized a long-cherished dream when their new church building called Kersansky Center, or Christian Center, was completed and first used in May 2004. Yvonne and the Longmont Church uh, leadership envisioned a multifunctional purpose for both worship service, neighborhood use by children and families, and community service. The building was actually designed by a Muslim architect and intended to blend Croatian architectural style and Christian influence. The cross it bears symbolizes reaching out to all religiously, just as Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for all the world. Hello, I'm here in the Zapresic Church of Christ. This is the baptistry, and hopefully there will be many additions to the church here. This is a beautiful building. It's just been completed for about a year. It's multi-purpose. It has a, an auditorium area that can also be set up for um, ping pong, which is over here on the right. This is performances. They have risers where the Harding University Chorus sang recently. They have a big atrium when you come in that can also hold functions. Here's the front door. Unfortunately, the government changed the street when the building was built, so now the front door doesn't go to the street. But the people were very innovative, and they made a parking lot at the back door. This is the back door which looks out on their nice courtyard where they have a fountain. We've helped mow the grass. It grows very thick here. They have roses and they are starting to have a sports court in the back where activities can take place. Welcoming and itinerary. When we arrived at the Zagreb airport, Yvonne greeted us by saying, Welcome to Croatia the most beautiful country in the world. For an instant or so, I thought he might not have seen Yosemite or Yellowstone while in America, but I let that pass. However, it was clear as we began traveling around the countryside that Croatia was a very green and scenic country. Its geography ranged from rolling hills and mountainous ridges 
to verdant farmlands and the renowned beaches of the Adriatic Sea. In contrast, some of the landscape and buildings still bore bullet and bomb scars of the war that were starkly apparent. After a night's rest, Yvonne himself took us to one of the national parks of Croatia called Plitvicka Jezera. Throughout the day, we hiked about, seeing a breathtaking series of clear, turquoise-colored lakes. We visited in August, so Plitvicka was very crowded with people from all over Europe, as this was the traditional time for vacation. Here, we should say something about the Croatians themselves. While their language is difficult to digest, many of them are fluent in English as a second language. And further, a lot of them would like to learn more English from us. They are friendly and courteous people, and they are generally receptive to talk and discussion of many things, rather than shying away. And this includes religious matters. There have been some good humored things this week. This one was a ghost of Yvonne asked me to give a talk today as a part of your worship service. I told him I would be glad to talk for two hours. <laughs> but he told me to try for two minutes. He said it would be okay for Lynn to stay extra. <laughs> but then he needed to get me to the airport on time today. <laughs> on Wednesday, we traveled by train to Zagreb with a young man from the church, Tomi Topic, as our guide. Obviously an ancient capital. It teemed with buildings close together, streets and open markets full of people, and stately public structures and gardens. We toured the main Church of Christ in Zagreb, within which was housed both a Bible institute and the congregation itself. We visited with Miladin Jovanovic, the minister, and the institute faculty. We enjoyed their positive outlook and updates about their local and regional efforts. Intriguing was the church's baptistry, a replica of an original in split Croatia, and by which immersion occurred by leaning forward headfirst from the sitting position. Today, the subject of my talk is what it means to be disciples in Christ's church. Jesus Christ himself reminded us that what was true in the Old Testament is true in the New Testament. Which is that the greatest commandment is to love God with everything we have. And Christ was quick to say the second commandment was very close to the first. That we love one another as ourselves. Jesus 
Jesus was talking about what comes from normal, healthy development. Jesus was talking about what comes from normal, healthy development. That from a nurturing and responsive mother and father, that was a young brother that was very visually and outgoing. Friends and family, friends and family, teachers and community, comes a person capable of genuinely liking. Caring about himself or herself. And she said that the first was the osoba, it was the zdravo okruženja, koja će se moći, moći sama sebe ljubiti i brinuti o sebe. And to do that just as well toward others. I znači na taj način ko ljubi sebe. The next day, Ivan arranged for us to have lunch with himself and key members of a new small church in the city of Brasden. These were Miladin Dominic, minister, and a recent convert named George, who is a professional musician. They happily showed us their church's storefront location and interior adaptation, which emphasized children's Bible story and play materials. We really marveled at George's upbeat nature, despite having an autistic child, and his excitement about learning what the Bible actually teaches. At both the church building and his home, he showed us woodwork he had made with inscribed verses. His enthusiasm impressed us. Another famous geographical feature of wishbone-shaped Croatia is the aforementioned Adriatic coastline, which winds down to the country's southern tip and ends at the ancient and revered city of Dubrovnik, which was one of the first countries, as it was at the time itself, to recognize America's independence. With Lynn's urging, we took a day trip to Dubrovnik with Ivica as a guide. You could feel the pulsating of history in this place, which had borne the brunt of Serbia's misguided war strategy of heavy bombing, which had fortunately failed. The heat, humidity, and lack of air conditioning were problems, but whether walking on top of the massive fortress perimeter or strolling along narrow serpentine streets, or quietly standing amid huge tourist crowds inside cathedral Catholic churches built in the Middle Ages. You were awed by the timelessness of it. Also, I believe that it helped Lynn and me to more deeply understand the value that God places on spreading Christian principles to faraway peoples and places. I think a key meaning of being a disciple is found in Luke chapter 6, verse 40, which says,